Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to talk about who needs an enterprise GIS. Hopefully by now you have a better idea of what that means and how it can benefit your organization and probably you've decided that it's something that you want to look into a little bit more at least. But if you're still unsure, hopefully this lecture will provide you with some better information that you can use to make a good decision. It might actually be easier to talk about who doesn't need enterprise GIS because that list is much smaller but then we wouldn't have a chance to describe all the different problems that Enterprise GIS can solve. In short though, unless you're a single user who keeps all their data on a local hard drive and rarely shares data with anyone, you would probably benefit from Enterprise GIS. That situation was more common in the past when GIS was not common. Not many people had the skill sets to use it and data sets were much smaller. It's less common these days as geospatial data and analysis are becoming mainstream data types in today's world. But let's talk about some specific use cases. We've talked quite a bit about the advantages of enterprise GIS in allowing multiple editors, so we're not going to continue talking about that. If you have a lot of dynamic data, remember that means data that changes a lot, then storing that data in an enterprise database has advantages. It takes a lot more computer resources to load, change, and save an entire file than to simply submit a change request to the database. For instance, if your client wants to track your GIS data in real time as you're collecting it, then you probably need to set up a system where they have access to that data through your enterprise GIS. Otherwise, you'll have to constantly pack up the data and email it to them. And as soon as you do that, it's going to be out of date. If you have users in different offices, or even if you want to be able to work with your data from home or when you're traveling, then you'll need an enterprise GIS. In fact, you can have users anywhere in the world that has an internet connection if your system is set up correctly. If you want to be able to have different types of users and control exactly what they can do in your database, then you'll need an enterprise GIS system. Maybe you want your client from the above example to be able to see certain data in real time but not be able to change or see the rest of your data. Or you might have technicians that you want to let modify the data as it changes but not create new data or delete existing data. Maybe there is a specific field that a project manager uses to track a project that he doesn't want anyone else to be able to see. All of that can be done easily with an enterprise GIS. And good luck trying that with a file-based architecture. I think you'll find that it just can't be done. If you want to be able to access your data from multiple platforms, it's much easier with an enterprise GIS. Remember in this case the data is completely separate from the client software, so it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac that can't run ArcGIS. As long as you have a client that can read your data, you can use your Mac or Linux or again any other platform that has a client that will work for you. You can also have multiple clients accessing your data. For instance, if your GIS department wants to keep using ArcGIS for making beautiful maps, because that's what they're used to and they don't want to learn something new, but you have a new project that's going to require 10 digitizers for six months, and your boss doesn't want to buy 10 new ArcGIS licenses just for six months. The digitizers can use QGIS for free because those 10 licenses for the level of ArcGIS that has the ability to edit enterprise data cost thousands of dollars each. And that's a lot of money, especially if, as far as you know, you're only going to need them for six months and you may not need them ever again. But you can set up a system where the digitizers use QGIS, which is free, at the same time that your GIS department is using ArcGIS. And you might even have an analyst who's become sold on the parallel processing capabilities of Manifold GIS and wants to use it for crunching large amounts of data. Or you might have a database expert who's a whiz at, with SQL and he wants to do all his work that way. You can do all of this with no problem because people can connect to your database with the client of their choice. Or more importantly, the most efficient client for their specific need. Now maybe your client that wants to track the data that you're collecting in real time doesn't know anything about GIS and doesn't want to learn. When you suggest that he downloads QGIS and connect to your database, his eyes glaze over and he says, can I just see my data on Google Maps? Well, if you have an enterprise database, you can set up a web application that allows him to do exactly that. 
just to view the data that you're collecting in real time on a background of Google Maps or maybe OpenStreetMap or something like that. But something simple that he would feel comfortable with and have no problem using. And I have courses that will show you how to do that for free with some programming, but you could also hire someone to do it for you. But to make that work, you need to have access to data that's stored in an enterprise GIS. And again, if you have field staff that want to be able to view your data while they're out in the field, on a mobile device, or even collect and modify data in the field, then you need to have an enterprise GIS. If you expect your organization to grow over time, both in number and in functionality, then it may be important to you that an enterprise GIS has no problem growing right along with you, up to even having millions of users. You're never going to get to the point where you run up against the wall and have to move to an, an entirely new system. You may have to pay a little bit more to add more resources to your enterprise GIS, but it won't change functionally the way you do things. Finally, if you're working with large amounts of data, an enterprise GIS can handle terabytes and even pentabytes with ease. There are no realistic limits. File-based systems will start choking when you reach a few gigabytes, because remember, a file-based system has to open an entire file at once and store it into memory. So if any of these things strike a chord with you, you're probably a candidate for an enterprise GIS system. I should clarify that you may find solutions for one or more of these issues without moving to a full-blown enterprise GIS. Maybe you find a hosting platform for a mobile application, but only an enterprise GIS can address all of these issues and seamlessly integrate with your desktop GIS software. So why wouldn't you want to go that route? Best of all, it's easy. And if you use open source tools, it's very inexpensive. And now that you hopefully have a better understanding of what an enterprise GIS is all about, we'll spend the rest of the course creating one from scratch using open source software. I would argue that even though we use open source software for this course, because we want it to be accessible to everyone, that the principles that you learn will be invaluable, even if you should eventually choose to go the commercial route. So thanks for listening. That's the end of the introduction section. And in the next lecture will be the start of a new section. And we'll talk about the steps involved in migrating to Enterprise GIS. And then we'll follow those steps one by one. And we're going to create an open source Enterprise GIS right here in front of you. I think you'll be amazed at how easy and effective it is. And you can follow along with me and create your own Enterprise GIS and start playing around with it and see if it will serve your needs, and I'm betting that it will. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next lecture.